Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Hollywood Spotlight Series. I'm Joey Garrity. I'm a brand director and content strategist, and I worked in Hollywood for 15 plus years at top studios. The Hollywood Spotlight is a live show that I put together to interview Hollywood influencers like the Hollywood influencer I'm going to introduce in just a minute. The intention behind the show is to inspire others, no matter what field you're in, to really, you know, take inspired action, dream big, and just go for it, brothers and sisters. So today's featured guest is Hollywood executive Frank Gonzalez. Welcome Hello. to the show, Frank. Hi, Joey. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm really great. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm such a big fan of yours. I was like thrilled when you said yes, because I know how busy you are out there, brother. But I really, what I really wanted to start out with is I wanted you to share a little bit about your journey. I want everyone out there in the audience to hear how awesome this is and how you took your dreams at a very young age. I think it was around 12 even. Mm -hmm. And then you brought them to fruition, brother. Well, maybe I start with what I do now. I mean, now I see myself as a advocate and a coach for emerging writers and directors. I spent many years coaching writers, now I coach uh, directors. So, um, so let me start, go back to, you're right, when I was 10 or 12 years old, I was inspired by uh, you know, Star Wars and Indiana Jones and uh, Lucas and Spielberg films and started making eight millimeter films, um, enter, entering contests and winning um, recognition. And so at the age of 12, 13, 14, I had this, developed a bug and passion for becoming a visual storyteller. Um, flash forward years later, I ended up uh, getting to a small film program at UC Irvine. Um, graduated from UC Irvine, and a good friend of the family told me, Frank, in order to move forward in your career, you have to just work in the industry. <laughs> right. And so I jumped in, and I ended up spending five plus years working production, commercials, television, uh, movies, and really learning the production side of things while I was concurrently making my own short films and uh, independent projects. And um, got to a certain point where I got burned out with production, and I ended up going back to school. Back to school. I went to the UCLA Producers UCLA. Program, got my MFA from UCLA, and then I was back to square one again. And then I met an executive at Disney, and um, six months later she called me and said, look, there's a, a position opening up at, at ABC. The current executive is being put in charge of, of these programs, and uh, it might be an opportunity to get into the company. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And so I met with the ABC executive. She hired me, and I decided uh, I thought, I'll give this job a year. And I ended up being there, ended up being there close to 14 years. So, so um, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know what I really love about this, about your story, Frank, is you talk about how you hustled. You know what I'm saying? Like someone, like a mentor gave you a piece of advice and instead of just kind of sitting back on your laurels or just sitting back in the saddle, you're, you were in forward motion. And that made like such a huge difference. You know what else too is you can speak everyone's language down there, right? Cause you've been on, on all sides of, of mm -hmm. the, of the, the tracks, right? right. I want to give a big shout out to Susan. Hi, Susan Jacob. She's with us right now. She says, amazing story and following your passion. That's very impressive, Frank. Oh, thank you. Um, Oh yeah, Susan's awesome. We love Susan. So, so, so tell me, Frank, what was it like when you went from production, then you went back to school first? I, I love that you went back and got 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 like more education. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you at the time? Well, you know, it was always a goal of mine to get a higher degree. I thought if I eventually teach or wasn't really sure what I want to do like later on um, <clears throat> that I would go back to school and I was getting older and I thought you know what I you know what? better do this before I, get, before I have a lot of other commitments and so I you know applied to the Peter Stark program at USC and applied to the UCLA producers program I knew I knew had production experience I'd done short films I knew the creative side of telling the story visually I just felt I needed the business side of things and so um, fortunately I got into the UCLA program it was like it's a fantastic program did that in a couple of years um, but then again like I said then I had to start over again because basically you know going to film school is not a guarantee that it's going to get you two three five years ahead it's really just to help you foundationally built your experience and knowledge um, but I knew that going into it it was more of just the goal of get that MFA go to film school build my knowledge base tell tell me tell us something about I love how you say so you had to start over right and I, I let's everyone out there virtually you know hold up your hand if you've had to start over several times right I mean that's that that's just that's just a journey right but how did you get that energy back up when you had to start over how did you inspire yourself to take that action brother 
Mm-hmm. Well, I think um, for me, it always goes back to what drives you. And for me, I've always had a desire to work in the industry, uh, to be creative. Um, you know, uh, it, it, that passion has always helped me. I can't say it's been easy all the time. I mean, there, there are moments along my journey where I where really I wasn't sure. You know, I think, okay, um, maybe this is not working out. But then I would think to myself, well, what else do I want to do? And that would kind of right. put me back into this craziness, as you know, this is craziness. Um, but I think it's because I love film and television. I love the story, visual storytelling. Uh, I love going to, you know, screenings and meeting the filmmakers. And again, having had some experience doing a little bit of that, you know, I understand the creative process and it just is very exciting. Very exciting. Well, I want to also give a shout out to John. Hi, John. Hi, John Moore. John and I start out in the business on Stargate together. Um, so yeah, no, he's wonderful. I always see him on Facebook. He's doing amazing things. Um, I also, so I, so I love that. So it, it's so true. We can all relate to that, that there's can kind of be this stop and go. But then here's what I also love about your story. You asked for help. That executive didn't just come and hand you a job, right? So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit more about that because I want to really inspire that action. Because guess what, Frank? There's a lot of lone wolves out there. And what happens for lone wolves? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happens for a lone wolf, right? It's a team effort, right? So I'd love to hear more about that part too. Well, I think I learned. Uh, uh, well, I'm, by nature, believe it or not, I'm actually shy by nature. I, over the years, you met me when I was working at Disney. I sort of developed this ability to, you know, talk to a large group of people and present myself pretty well and have a have a uh, exchange with executives. And but when I when I was much younger, I didn't feel as comfortable doing that. And so there was sort of a, a, a learning point when I started really, really processing this idea of networking and really trying to learn that I had to really, especially in this business, really get myself out there. And so the the connection with the Disney executive was simply me seeing her name listed, I think it was a publication or something, me writing a letter to her. And I was oh, working wow. with her and she responded. And it was just, I just felt like, look, look, I'm interested in that company or this person. I did it to a lot of different people. Why not send a letter? And back then it was before really, you know, emails. Or, you know, this is 20 plus years ago. So I you know, wrote a letter, sometimes handwritten, or I would send a type information with my information my background as a filmmaker at that time and as a film school graduate and some people responded and so she responded um invited me to disney i had a interview with her just we're kind of like we're doing now just really pays for my story at that point in time um and then i didn't hear from her i didn't go to thinking okay i'm gonna meet her and if she's gonna get right i thought here's an interesting person just responded to my to my letter I'm going to sit with her and just tell her about who I am and see where it goes. And that's really what happened. Okay. You know what I'm digging about this is I want to tell the audience out there to take inspired action by just like literally emailing someone that you want to meet. Like what if we just all did that, right? Like we don't know what's going to come out of it. And Frank just shared with us how, Look at like it like literally was a tipping point for you, right? Mm-hmm. Right, because you ended up in, a, in an amazing company, one of the, actually the biggest companies in the world, mm-hmm. brands in the world, and for 14 years of your life, and you made such an impact there. Will you share with everyone the kind of impact that you were making over there? Because I know it very well, because that's how I actually met Frank. Right. Well, uh, I mentioned to Joey. Joey knows this because we're, we're friends, but I, you know, I, you know, I. I Going into the position at Disney, I really didn't know what to expect. And it was really at a time when diversity was not a buzzword. I mean, it was really something that the company needed to do. And I was very fortunate at the time. I didn't know it at the time, but I fell into the job. And I ended up loving the job and loving the work that we were doing. And with the leaders I worked with, we really broke down doors for people and brought people into the studio and network. We discovered showrunners and directors and people that we gave them their, their first breaks. And so I just got really excited about what they're doing. And that's just happened by, I guess, just I guess going where the journey was taking me. Rather than me trying to control, having some kind of control about my path, I just really embraced the journey. And as I embraced the journey of myself, I thought, wow, this is incredible. We're helping established careers for people. We're opening doors for people. We're inspiring people. And I had this amazing thing happen a couple of years into the job. I had a, I ran the, the Disney Writers Fellowship for many years. This writer got into the program and 
she called me like right when she was accepted the program and she said frank i don't know if you remember this but i called you two years ago and i didn't get into the program and you spent 30 minutes talking to me about just myself and my career and that inspired me and here i am i'm now in the program and i had no recollection of this conversation i had unfortunately with her but i was touched by the fact that that helped her and kind of motivate her. Obviously, she has her talent and she has her own passion for what she's doing. But I had a small way of, of touching her, encouraging her, inspiring her that she stayed on that. And that really kind of really solidifies for me what I enjoyed about this work. Enjoyed about this work. Okay, there's a couple things here that we have to highlight. First of all, this control aspect. I just blogged about this morning. <laughs> about we got to let go. And it's just, I mean, it's just inherently being human, right? But I love how you just embrace the journey. And also, too, we don't always know who we're impacting. Right. Right. That's, that's true. It's so great that she picked up the phone and I always encourage people. I'm like, call people that have impacted you, even if it was 10 years or 20 years, because they don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know. And it can really make, it can really keep like the wind underneath our wings going when we're having those moments. And because we've all had them when we're just like, is this working? Like for mm -hmm. real? Mm -hmm. right? So, right. But what, and the other thing too is how far Hollywood's come. When you were doing the diversity program, it was because the brands thought they had to do it. Yes. Right. Yes. And now they want to do it. Yes. So let's talk about that, Frank. Let's talk about that mm -hmm. shift of what's happened in Hollywood and how people are like jumping on board instead of being like, I guess I'll have to. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I tell people about when we were building out the Writers Fellowship and I say we had to beg, borrow and steal because basically we had to get the executives on board and it took us about six or eight years to get those executives plugged into it. But what we did back then was we got them motivated with the idea that we were discovering new talent. It wasn't that this is a diversity program. In fact, we didn't even call it diversity. It was a talent development program. And then you could be discovering that. I remember they, that. Yeah. I was always wondering why it wasn't called the diversity program. Because people trip, even today, get tripped up on what diversity means. They think it's right? human resources. They think it's one thing, another thing. And we just felt, look, we're about talent. We're about opening the, the doors for people. We're about finding the most qualified people and skilled people. And so that was early on in the process. What we learned along the way was it's not just about talent because we would bring talented people in but they didn't have quite the navigational skills or the knowledge to navigate. So what we learned along the way was not only finding talented people, but people who already are studying the industry, people who've had a little bit of experience, people who are a little couple steps moving forward, makes the world of difference for us in bringing those people in. So that was sort of how it's changed over time. Now, obviously, the last three years, now I'm, I'm the head of diversity over at the DGA, so I'm involved with the senior leadership in our task force, and we talk about this. But the conversation is different now. Even the last three years where I've gone with our, with our company organization and met with the studio executives, the conversation has changed even in the last couple of years because I think people are just understanding that this is something that is – impactful. This is something that where we are in our society and where we are in the industry, but it did not happen overnight. And it has been going on for quite a long time, way before I even got involved. Yeah, it's that's so true. And, you know, before we move on, because I know you're going to be sharing something um, very special next in the third act is, is I want to thank, I want to um, publicly thank you, Frank, because you had you you gave me a call um, in 2017, towards the end of 2017, and you said, "Hey, we're going to be doing this panel for the diversity program, and would you be one of the branders that came and sat on the panel?" And I said, "Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. How fast? When can I get there? <laughs> right?" But what you really did, brother, is you opened up a door for me to reconnect and meet the members. And so since then, I've opened up an entire Hollywood division to the 113 branding. So I want right. to thank you. We are all well, literally connected on a very deep level and we all really are making an impact on one another. Well, I, my pleasure, Joe. You know, I love you and we've had such a great working relationship. And when you were, you know, we're doing new things and different things over at, at uh, ABC Studios, uh, I've always been a fan of yours. And, and I was always think in the back of my mind when there would be the right opportunity for a panel or a workshop. And I thought, oh, here we go. So I called Joe and see if you can do it. So I'm glad it worked out. And then I opened up an entire division. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And there we go. Thank you, Frank. Again, thank you so much. I 
Um, so for the audience out there, you guys are in for a real treat. So, uh, so I always ask the influencers to bring the golden ticket to, uh, to all of us so we can all be learning from one another. Um, so Frank, so would you uh, be so kind to share your golden ticket with the audience, brother? Mm -hmm. Well, this is not something that I've created, but these are things that I've learned over the years and kind of coalesce into what I tell people. Anyone who is trying to break in with no experience, those who've been on the journey for a while, and those even who are like the people I work with now who have some experience in trying to get to the next level. I, what I've learned and heard from people is that there are four Ps, passion, patience, persistence, and preparation. And those are really the foundation for any journey that you end up under, undertaking. Passion, you have to have a passion for this. This is such a difficult business that you have to love it. If there's something second best that you want to do, you need to do it because it's such a <laughs> difficult, challenging business. So you have to have the passion for it. Patience. It takes time. It takes longer than you want it to take for most people. So go into this understanding that you have to have patience for the long journey. Persistence. Don't give up. I mean, you have to learn and adjust along the way. It doesn't mean that you ignore the feedback you get from people. You ignore some of the blo of some of the challenges you have, but you have to be persistent in moving this forward if this is what you want to do. And then, of course, preparation. Preparation. You have to be prepared, and that's something that we're doing here in our organization, and we've done before with people coming into the business. Is that you have to prepare yourself. Luck favors the prepared mind. The more that you learn about the business or the craft or the area that you're interested in, the more prepared you are when that opportunity or those opportunities come your way. Uh, so that's the four Ps. But I have something more to add, if you don't mind. Um, I love it. Once you get there, and this is something that one of my the co-chairs of the, the diversity task force I work with, the DJ, DJ Todd Holland, really articulated very well, which I think is perfect, is once you get kind of where you want to be and in the direction you are, you take it to the next. There's three words that help define that, and that's joy, craft, and network. Joy wow. is find your joy, not just in the work you do, but the thing that makes you happy outside the work and creative work that you do. You need to protect that joy. Craft, continue to work on your craft. I know experience, amazing directors here that are like, amazing directors that have some experience and they're still learning and growing and sharpening their skills. So you have to always be developing your craft. And of course, network. How do you build your network? Expanding your network, being a smart networker. I mean, that's something we can talk about too, but really being strategic. And so the joy, craft, network, repeat. Todd Holland really articulated, he's the director. Um, that I work with, and he really came up with that slogan, but it works. And that's really what, once you get to where you kind of along the way, joy, craft, network, repeat. Joy, craft, network, repeat. And I love that you get, I love that he talks about starting with joy. You know, there is this overall kind of umbrella that we're grow, growing up in America. It's just like pound it, you know, just kill it. Just like do it anyways, kind of an attitude. And I love that you're starting with joy yes. because when we have joy in our hearts and when we let go and try not to control, right? Mm -hmm. And when we embrace the journey, like look at all this, like dreaming big is a real reality and it actually all comes to fruition. And you're just such an incredible symbol of all that, Frank. I cannot say, I'm, I'm just such a huge fan of yours. I love how you're down there and you are about diversity and you're giving people opportunities and you're opening doors because something I'm very passionate about is every door that we help someone else open, they're helping many, many other people to open up door after door after door. So it really is a connecting. We're all connected here, down here. But I do want to remind the audience out there to dream big. Dream big, mm -hmm. right? Frank started dreaming at 12, and look at how far he's come, right? Long so, time ago. <laughs> so listen, Frank, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. And, you know, just being so generous with your expertise with all of us. I want to thank everyone out there. And I want to give you a shout out before we go to Sue. And uh, so Sue says here, what an amazing foundation starting with joy. Absolutely, Sue. And I also want to give a shout out to Mary. Hey, you guys. And I want to also thank everyone that joined us. And then I want to thank everyone who's here with us on replay. Please, in the comments section, put replay. Put your questions. And um 
Uh, Frank and I will definitely get back to you and we'll answer those questions. And um, it's all about um, visibility influence out there. But also, too, guys, it's about it's really your birthright to stand in your visibility influence. And until the next Hollywood Spotlight series, I will see you all. Cheers, everyone. Ciao. Thank you. Bye bye.